Well, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is on the road meeting with fellow NATO leaders this morning. The special summit aims to find a way to end the fighting in Ukraine. Canada and its allies are expected to unveil a new round of economic sanctions against supporters of Russian, Russian president, that is, Vladimir Putin. Trudeau is also facing pressure to boost Canada's financial contributions, which NATO estimates stands at about 1.4 percent of the country's GDP right now. Despite its name, NATO is not simply a geographic alliance. It's a group of countries who stand together because we believe in democracy, in the rule of law, in the defense of human rights, in the values that underpin all of our societies. That's why this illegal, brutal invasion of a friendly democracy in Ukraine by Vladimir Putin is absolutely unacceptable. Now, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says the military alliance is set to green light sending more troops to Eastern Europe. NATO is providing unprecedented support to Ukraine, helping them to defend themselves. Uh, NATO allies uh, are also uh, imposing unprecedented sanctions on Russia uh, to uh, 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 hamper, reduce uh, the capability of Russia to finance this uh, war against uh, Ukraine. Uh, and we are also, of course, uh, uh, making sure that we are ready to protect and defend uh, all uh, allies. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky joined the summit virtually, pleading for NATO to step up military support for Ukraine. Zelensky also addressed Swedish lawmakers today, saying Ukraine deserves to be a full member of the European Union. All right, for more on Trudeau's trip to Brussels, we're joined by Mark Schweck. He's the vice president of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress's Toronto branch. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, Mark, what are you hoping Trudeau and other leaders will achieve in Brussels? Well, I'm hoping they take the bold step and move forward. The, the amount of support they've given has been incredible. Um, but Ukraine is fighting a much more numeric and more heavily invested enemy. Russia has been preparing for this for 10 or 20 years. They've amassed huge amounts of equipment. Uh, they have a huge amount of soldiers. It sounds like they're going to call up reserves and such. Uh, Ukraine is on the front line of the war, the, the war for democracy. And uh, whether they're NATO country or not, we're expecting that the NATO countries would realize this, that Ukraine is defending that front line that they're on. And we'd expect them to provide additional support. Um, we'd, of course, like them to close the uh, skies, uh, uh, declare a no-fly zone. If they can't do that, give them the MiGs that are sitting in Poland and in other countries. We don't see any reason they can't get them provide uh, anti-aircraft uh, batteries that they need so desperately so they can at least shoot down the Russian planes who are just destroying some of the cities, in particular Mariupol. Now, Mark, some of what you just highlighted here would certainly sort of, you know, raise Vladimir Putin's ire here. So do you see any way that NATO could get involved in the war right now without, you know, basically ticking off Putin and escalating things? We keep hearing, that, you know, if there's a no-fly zone, for example, that's sort of the tipping point for World War III. Yeah, so, so look, I recognize that some of the, to get all the NATO countries to agree is a challenge, but at least provide them with anti-aircraft batteries. They're sitting in Poland and in other countries along the border of, of, uh, with uh, Russia and uh, of the Eastern Alliance of NATO. Um, we say at least get them into Ukraine so Ukrainians can shoot down those planes. If, the, if they get more javelins mm -hmm. and get the anti-aircraft batteries that they need so desperately, they can probably declare their own no-fly zone. All right. And Mark, uh, we know that Estonia and Lithuania are calling for a no-fly zone. Poland asking for NATO troops to be on the ground in Ukraine. Do you think there is any compromise in either of those cases? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, those countries are on the front line. They realize that if Ukraine goes down, the rest of Eastern Europe's in trouble. And um, if Ukraine goes down, you're now going to have four countries in NATO, Romania, Hungary, Poland, and uh, Slovakia, that are going to be on the border, on the very front line on the border with Russia, a new Russia. So it's important for NATO to step up. It's important to heed their call. Um, they understand the consequences. And again, I underscore, if we can't do no fly, at least give them the anti-aircraft batteries. Yeah, some, some sort of support indeed. Now, Mark, it's right. interesting. There are so many Ukrainians, of course, that call Canada home right now. We've highlighted some of the ways uh, Ukrainians here are helping, uh, you know, people back in Ukraine. But I'm sure uh, as part of the United Canadian, Ukrainian Canadian Congress, you know much more about how Ukrainians here in Canada are helping people back in the home country. 
Well, there's so many ways. First of all, everyone's donating to the Canada Ukraine Foundation, which is our massive humanitarian effort. Uh, they are helping with uh, the Friends of Ukraine to assist the volunteers and the fighters on the front line. The, the Ukrainians, many of them have gone to Europe to assist in Poland on the border or, or have gone back to Ukraine to get their parents out, uh, quite frankly. So they were here on, uh, on um, working or living and they went back to get their family members. So there, there's a variety of ways people are helping. And right now what we're working on is trying to assist the, the many refugees we expect to come to Canada. Mm -hmm. All right. And Mark, uh, I know that there's an event planned at Casa Loma for this Sunday to help the people of Ukraine. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, I can. It starts at 930 and it's basically a tour. So we'd ask people to book their time. It's not that you walk up to the gates, although you may be lucky and get in. But the idea is to pre-book your tickets online. Um, and therefore, you come in at a assigned time, you spend about two hours there, and you get to tour the, uh, the facilities, of course. And then added on top of that are a number of Ukrainian exhibits, um, um, singers and so on, arts and crafts for kids. So we've added a, a Ukrainian component to Casa Loma to give you that extra mm -hmm. sense of, uh, of uh, your experience there. And all the proceeds are going to help uh, uh, the refugees coming to Canada. And it certainly ties into what President Zelensky is saying, that it's the world that's going to help end this war. Mark, thanks so much for your time. Mark Schweck, Mark Schweck is the Vice President of Ukrainian-Canadian Congress's uh, Toronto branch. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.